You're listening to Being Autistic. I'm your host, Shelly, and I am a 50-year-old woman sharing my experiences about what it's like to grow up knowing I was different but not knowing why, how I learned I was on the autism spectrum, and what it's like to be autistic. Hello, and welcome to episode number nine. This one is called Struggles with Romantic Relationships. So this is a separate... Uh, podcast episode from the last one and I originally was gonna put them together because really romantic relationships and friendships fall under the same category of uh, relating to people but the thing is each one of these subjects is very deep on its own and if you've already heard my last episode about really about friendships then you realized how much information I had to share and I have just as much to share about romantic relationships. So let's get into this. So autistic people struggle with other people um, and this is a common problem. And so the reason that I really struggled with um, romantic relationships I think was partially because I didn't feel like an adult when I became an adult. When I was a teenager, I did not even feel like uh, comfortable with the thought of sex and I didn't date and probably that might have also been because I didn't get asked on a date at all in, in high school or even for a long time after that. I did have some guys that, or boys maybe you could say, that maybe liked me, but nothing ever happened. And this was a common theme for me, and I hear a, a lot of autistic people say this too, that it just didn't happen. Like, it didn't, it didn't feel comfortable, it didn't happen naturally, it felt like a struggle, it was like an effort to make it happen, and, and also, I, I didn't really understand it either. I felt like it was some sort of secret thing that everybody else knew that I just didn't know. Like when my friends in high school started to date boys and have sex, that was just something that I thought was, you know, that's for adults, why are you doing that? <laughs> and I felt like I just didn't, I wasn't ready, maybe? I mean, I don't even know if I can say that because I don't think I'm even fully ready now. But the thing was, at the time, it felt like something that was foreign to me. And so, I didn't date at all until I was 26. So yeah, that was quite a big chunk of my life where I did not have any romantic relationships. And the thing is, neurotypical people usually have a family started by the time they're 26. And see, when I was still living with my mom, I was still working the same job and I pretty much had, when it comes to friends, like I'll go a little bit into the friends thing, even though I already did this uh, episode about that, but basically it was hard for me to make friends as well. <clears throat> so I made my friends through work and I thought that, you know, that was also where I was going to meet someone as for a romantic partnership and it just took an extra long time. So I did actually have a couple of crushes around, you know, maybe in my teen years too, but even as an early, in my early 20s, I had crushes on people. But the thing was, I didn't know how to approach that. I just I just kind of stood back from afar and and crushed on them from afar. <laughs> and, you know, I would talk to them, of course, if I was friends with them, but I, I was never an ag not aggressive. I was never assertive when it comes to, you know, asking someone on a date. And I, I was a teenager in the 1990s, so 1980s late. But um, basically, I felt like women girls should not be chasing after boys or, you know, asking them out. It really didn't become a feminist's world until later, but the thing was, I either, even, if it, even if it would have been normal for girls to go after boys, I still wouldn't have. I didn't. 
if I liked somebody, I just told my friends and kept it to myself and just thought about the person and talked to them and just hoped. I just hoped that they would ask me out. Now, I didn't really... I, I probably hoped for it, but I, at the same time, I... The, there's a weird disconnect between this. I want to, at the time I wanted to have a boyfriend, even though I didn't really feel comfortable chasing after one, but at the same time, there was this disconnect where I didn't really... Maybe it's because I never had had one at the time yet. I didn't know if it would have been right for me and... I'm probably explaining this horribly, but let me explain how maybe this is what I should go into first is the first time I did date. So the first time that anybody asked me out to the point where, well, actually my first boyfriend, I didn't even want to go out with him. Here's how that one played out. So my first boyfriend that I met when I was 26 was a friend, not even a friend. He was a coworker of my best friend. So they talked at work and I worked at the same place but I didn't work the same shift and I my best friend said you know there's this guy that wants to date you and he's a loser but you know I told him I would tell you and I'm like I'm not interested you know cuz I I mean I knew him I've seen him I saw him and Here's the thing with autistic people, at least me, I need to be attracted to someone physically and it's not on a superficial level, it's more of a, a visual stim type of thing. This is what I learned later. We like things that are pleasing to us for all of our senses. We like things that are pretty to look at, we like things that feel good in our fingers, we like things that are pleasant to hear. So I feel like my attraction to people is all based on what my eyes like to look at. And this is not the same as like a, a man being attracted to a woman because she's sexy and he wants to have sex with her. Because I didn't think of sex when it came to these people. I just liked them because they were cute and my eyes had <laughs> my, my eyes had a good time looking at them. Or, you know, maybe I really did like their personality, of course, because I am not the kind of person that will just date somebody based on their looks. However, like I said, you know, I really needed someone to appeal to my eyes. If I didn't know anything about them, I would at least need them to appeal to my eyes. And so when I was told about this guy, I'm like, well, there's nothing special about what he looks like, although he did have long hair, which is my weakness. There's this thing with me and long hair, and I think it comes from being a teenager in the 80s, and all the hair bands had long hair, and that was my music, and that was the type of guys that I would have their posters on my wall. So I grew up thinking that long hair on men was attractive, and of course I still think that. I think anybody looks better with long hair, though it's not just a, a sexual thing. I think even if you're a woman and you have really short, like the pixie haircuts that a lot of people think are so, I mean, they're cute, cute in certain ways that cute can be, but for a f attractiveness, I don't think that short hair is attractive on anybody. So even myself, you know, I'm not saying that I'm great looking at all. It, 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 <laughs> I'm just gonna keep going with this, but I think that any person on the planet looks better with long hair and I think it's a, I think it's another like I said, it's a visual stim. It's pleasing to my eye to see someone's face framed with hair. It's just a fact. And so this guy did have long hair and that was a plus. Um, but at the same time, you know, my friend told me he was a loser. And I didn't have any incentive at all to, to want to date this guy. Um, and I, I, now that I'm remembering, like, this was 30 years ago. Well, no, not 30. I was 26, so I w probably 25 years ago. But I was, like, um, forced into it, basically. Because my friend said, you know, I'm going to invite him over. And we'll all hang out. And you can meet him and go from there. So I agreed to that, 
And the surprising thing was, I didn't think he was a loser like my friend thought. Although, you know, I don't, I hope I don't get people that are mad at me saying the word loser because, I mean, I've been called a loser before. So the, when I'm using that word, it's, it's probably horrible, I understand. It's basically my, what my friend thought about this guy was that he didn't have very many friends and he was desperate for people to like him. And so that's what he was like. But I, at the same time, I still did not think, you know, that was a bad thing because I ended up dating him, obviously. Um, but the thing was, I still fell into this in a very weird way. I told my friend, you know, yeah, this guy is not as bad as you made it sound, but I don't know. What We'll see what happens. So, I, I mean, I did end up giving this guy my number, but the problem was, <laughs> after I gave him my number, I didn't, I wasn't prepared. I didn't know how to proceed because when this guy called me, I just couldn't answer the phone. And this is probably also because I have a weird thing with phones. I've always had a phone phobia. <clears throat> I've always had this thing where I would rather talk to somebody in person than on the phone. So he called me. This was back in the days before we had cell phones. So he called and I, if I wasn't there to answer the phone, it just didn't happen. But I didn't want to answer the phone, so I just didn't answer it, and I thought, you know, eh, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I just felt hesitant. I didn't... Uh, there's no explanation for this. I didn't naturally feel like answering the phone and starting a conversation and dating him. I was okay with hanging out with him, and I think this is where autistic people sometimes get into... Tr not trouble, but... They just don't know how to proceed because they're comfortable being with people on a certain level. They're not really comfortable taking it to the next level, even though they may want to. So, like I said, I've had crushes on guys, but then, you know, when it comes down to the wire, I just don't proceed. I don't know how to advance. <laughs> I didn't feel comfortable taking it to the next level. That could have been fear, it could have been the unknown, it could have been anxiety, it could have been just awkwardness, all of it. So eventually what happened was he tried calling me back probably 10 times in that same day. And the more he called back and the more that I didn't answer, the more I did not want to answer. <laughs> because like, what do you say to someone when they've literally just called you every 10 minutes on the dot you know, sometimes he might have waited half an hour in between calls. But I thought that was weird. And I also, since I'm not a phone person, I just, at that point, I was like, oh, I can't even want to date this guy anymore, even if I ever did. So then what happened was I, I had to answer the phone because if I didn't, he would have called when my mom was there and she would have answered and made me talk to him anyway because I was living with my mom. So I answered the phone at the last possible moment before my mom got home and somehow I ended up saying, sure, I'll go on a date. And we went on a date to McDonald's and I don't remember where else we went, but I didn't have a bad time. Um, so... This is so long ago now, I don't remember the details of how this happened, but we we did eventually become boyfriend and girlfriend. He bought me a rose and then gave it to me and kissed me on the cheek. And, you know, I was really happy <laughs> because I finally had a boyfriend and I finally had somebody that, you know, wanted to be with me. Which at this time now sounds very desperate, but, I mean, I was 26, like... If you're listening to this and you are older than 26, just imagine not, have had a, not having had anybody yet. So I, it was my first and I was like, okay, this is, I'm not, you know, the, I'm, I am likable. Somebody does like me. <laughs> and so we dated and um, it was fine. 
I, you know, my your first relationship, do you really know what, if, if it's right? Because you have nothing to compare it to. Um, all I knew was that I was happy that somebody liked me and I didn't not like him. In the beginning, you know, there was like always that honeymoon phase. But basically what ended up happening was, so we moved in together, but shortly after we moved in together, I felt like I was going through the motions. I felt like this guy was way more into me than I was into him. And I started to see things about him that I didn't like. Um, this is going to sound bad, but it's the truth. So he had this friend that... Um, he was, it was this guy's only friend and this guy's only friend moved away and th didn't tell him and that made me feel like what's wrong with this guy that his only friend would move away and not even tell him like he just basically ghosted him and then I thought I, I, I am I in the wrong here because uh, I, I feel like I'm going too deep into this. Maybe I shouldn't be talking this much about this guy. But anyway, what ended up happening eventually was that I just told him, you know, I don't want to get married. So if you do, you know, he did want to get married. So I, I told him I didn't want to get married. And he said, well, why don't you? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if it's you or I don't know if it's me. I just don't want to settle down. I want to see what else is out there. <clears throat> and so this was when I was about... 28, 29 years old by this time, you know, I did have other guys that wanted to date me. I was spreading out with meeting new people. So I told him, maybe we should try being in an open relationship and see how that goes. So what ended up happening was he actually just went and had sex with somebody and I went on some dates with some people that I actually wanted to be in a relationship with. I thought <laughs> so but anyway me and my boyfriend ended up breaking up and he moved out and so um, I did date other people but the other people that I dated didn't turn into relationships because I felt like you know I was trapped in that first one I felt like I was with him for way longer than I should have been and I didn't like that feeling of being with someone that I didn't like being with so that was probably another reason why none of my other relationships progressed because I do remember there was at least one guy that said that he wanted to be with me like in a relationship but I <laughs> what happened there was he wanted to call me and talk to me and I really hated talking on the phone so I said why don't we just chat on messenger like we have been and he didn't like that and he said if you don't call me right now then you're not gonna be able to talk to me ever again I'm like, really? You know that I hate talking on the phone. This ain't worth it. Let's just, okay, whatever. So that was done. <laughs> and so then there was some other guys after that. Um, another notable guy that I dated. I liked him at first, but it, it faded quickly. I think what happens sometimes when I get with people is I feel like I um, am expecting them to be like the male version of me and they're just so different and I don't feel it's not that I don't feel comfortable but I don't feel like they're a good match <laughs> I mean that's really all it is if somebody's not a good match for me I can feel it um, and I don't think you know there's so many people that stay in relationships past that point and I think what it I think I just have this heightened awareness of when someone's not right for me and, I mean, you could call that being picky, but if you're not happy, why would you force yourself to be happy? If you are, if you feel a disconnect between you and a person, why would you force it? That's how I look at it. So, um, I was in my 30s around this point, and I still had a couple of guys that I dated here and there, but nothing ever became serious, partly for that reason. Um... So the next actual boyfriend that I had, I got when I was in my early 40s. I think I was 42, maybe. Um, and that guy I met through a job. 
and we were actually friends first before we actually became a, in a relationship and that um let, so basically we dated for a year and it never got past that point because this relationship highlighted the fact that I was still struggling with sexual issues. Um, so with my first boyfriend, we, we did have some sexual things happen, but I did not feel super comfortable with it. I'm learning now that, you know, if you aren't comfortable having sex, but you do it anyway, that's not good. I mean, I thought, you know, this is what you do. You know, you're in a relationship, you're, does, you're expected to have sex. But I didn't, <clears throat> I didn't enjoy it. Um, and with the second guy, it became an issue because he really was a very sexual person and he wanted to do it like two or three times a day. And so that was not working for me. I basically, you know, would not try to have sex with him. I, I focused on the connection because I wanted to... I want to be close with someone before I do the sexual stuff with them. And I learned later that this is called demisexuality. So if you're a demisexual, it means that you want that close emotional connection before you have sex. And I suspect that a lot of autistics have this or identify that way. Because I know that, you know, sex is an issue for a lot of autistic people because a lot of people are asexual as well. They just you know, they can recognize when somebody is attractive, but it doesn't mean that they want to have a sex with them. And that's, I think that's partly what my deal is, but partly, uh, like I said, you know, a lot of things are just better in your imagination than they are in real life. When you actually are in that situation and you're like, this isn't what I thought. I'm not into this like I thought I would be, like I should be. And that, that also made me feel bad because I thought, why am I not into this? I like this person. I'm attracted to them. Why do I not want to have sex with them? And I'm not entirely sure if this is an autism thing, but I know that it's a thing regardless. And so that became an issue with that guy. And the thing that happened was, you know, we just grew apart because we didn't have sex. And I, all, there was also some other kind of disconnect between me and him where we just didn't see eye to eye and we had a lot of misunderstandings like he would say something and I would say something and he would be like really what or you know I would be like really what you know it was like there was we weren't on the same page at all and then that relationship ended because we realized that we should have just stayed friends and we are still friends to this day he still messages me on Facebook and we see each other at music festivals randomly occasionally um so then after that relationship ended i i thought you know what did i learn from this you know i i'm not into sex so that's gonna leave out a lot of guys and i also felt like there was a disconnection there where we i needed someone to be like me this guy was not like me at all we were too different so um, the next relationship, I actually was only a year or two, maybe even a year after that one. It happened pretty quickly. And this guy was another, a guy that I met at another job. And we dated for about nine months. And this guy was really great in the beginning. I mean, everything was great in the beginning. I felt like, wow, this one might actually be one that I can stick with. Because he was nice he accepted me um but then you know this one didn't last as long as the other ones and i think what happened was i quickly even more quickly became hyper aware of the things that didn't work for me with him um one of them being in autistics really love people that share their special interests and this guy not only did he not share my special my special interests, but he, um, so I took him with me to a music festival, which is my special interest, and he lasted two days, and then on the third day he left, and the way that he left was, 
I was dancing to my favorite band, and he wasn't dancing with me because he was just sitting in a chair in the back, which was odd, because who sits in a chair at their girlfriend's favorite band? You know, you, you want to be with them. You want to dance with them. You want to experience it with them, right? <laughs> I would think so. I mean, that's what I want in a relationship, is I want somebody that can experience the things that I love with me. So... I was with my friends. It was almost like I was single. You know, my boyfriend wasn't hanging out with me. I went after the words and went back to find him and he was gone. He had texted me saying that he left. He didn't feel comfortable there. He It wasn't his thing and that's just the end of it. So I'm like, okay, this ain't going to work. <laughs> this clarified it for me because I needed somebody that could be into the things that I was into and he couldn't even be there for me for that. And other things were wrong with him, not wrong with him, but not meshing with me. So we did not have the same interests at all. I hated his interests. His interests were things that I am completely against. So that didn't work. Um, I told him this ain't gonna work. Nope, this is done. So that was the last relationship I ever had, and that ended four years ago, I think it was now. And when that when that relationship when that relationship ended, I actually was so happy because I had been in a relationship for the better part of the last three or four years up to that point. The last three or four years before this before we broke up. And I was like, I need to be alone. I can't be with somebody that's not right for me. I just can't. I was so happy being single <laughs> that I was like, this is great. I've never been this happy being single because earlier in my life, in my early 20s, I thought I could be happy if I just had a boyfriend. And obviously having that first boyfriend proved that that wasn't true. And even the second two boyfriends proved that that wasn't true. So I enjoyed being single and that was four years ago and the first thing that I was really happy about was oh I'm so relieved I don't have to have sex <laughs> because I didn't really enjoy sex with that last guy either so I thought you know what maybe I'm just not meant to be in a relationship and have sex <laughs> um so where does that leave me now? Now, I'm, you know, it's been a couple years and I'm, I'm going through a lot of stuff. Like, as you know, I learned that I was autistic a couple months ago. Um, I'm also struggling with a lot of mental health issues, anxiety and depression and work issues. Like, I haven't been able to work in f about four years because that's a whole if you saw my episode listen to my episode about work struggles that explains that so i'm not seeing a lot of people on a regular basis i am basically living like a hermit aside from going to music festivals but they're only a couple times a year and then i have my my best friend that i've had in my life for probably 30 30 years now he's the only person that i actually hang out with i mean i mean i, I visit my family occasionally but I'm not around a lot of people and it's lonely at the same time as being good for me. And this is a weird conundrum that I probably will do another episode about this or maybe I'll just, yeah, maybe I'll leave that for another episode. But right now I feel like I could get into a relationship again, but it would definitely need to be somebody that's 100% for me. They're going to have to be aware of my autistic traits and accept them. They're going to have to know that I'm not a sexual person and that might be an issue. They're going to have to have the same shared interest with me. They're going to have to feel right to me. So there's all of these things now. And now I'm starting to feel like, is this even possible? Because I'm 50 years old. I mean, I'm just being realistic here. I barely leave the house. I'm 50 years old. I'm autistic. I don't like sex. What are the odds that I am going to meet a guy that wants to be with me, let alone the guy that's right for me? Because 
that's weeding it out even more to even less people. So that's where I stand right now. And I hope this episode has helped you realize that if you are struggling with romantic relationships, you are not alone. And this is a common autistic problem. So thank you so much for making it this far. And I will see you next week.